Here are some of our fossil finds from early January 2022. Some pyrite ammonites and I'll tell you a bit about those when I'm out on the beach a bit later in this video and a backbone of the ichthyosaur which I'll tell you about. Then uh, wait about and uh, we'll show you at the end of the video some fossil preparation of those pyritic ammonites to get the mud off the middles. There you can see some beautiful limestone layers and then the 2008 slip protruding out down below. People collecting fossils, looking for fossils here along the Jurassic coast. It must be fun to fly over the Lias layers like that. You can see up there in the sky. Well, I'm going to head right down the beach today. It was good to find those ammonites on the surface this morning, the pyrite ammonites. The early bird catches the worm. Did a little bit of sieving, had a bit of fun doing that. Went ahead down towards Charmouth on this really low tide part of the day and uh, I'll show you a bit about the fossils today. I'll sit down and uh, give you a bit of a fossil show and tell, a demonstration on the beach with my plastic model of an ammonite and an ichthyosaur just to get you into the picture of what they're all about and then uh, I'll show you a bit of fossil preparation at the end of the video. I'm out here fossil collecting along the beach today and uh, I've got a good uh, plastic model of an ammonite to show you the morphology of what an ammonite looked like back in the Jurassic seas, swimming around backwards, jetting out water with a siphuncle as it went and then in between the tentacles it had a really sharp beak a bit like a parrot's beak and that was for to grab small ichthyosaurs and fish especially the big ones we found one of these ammonites along this jurassic coast it was 65 centimeters across so a really large ammonite that's in the foster collection now but today as i've walked out i've just got one of the little pyrite ammonites there preserved in the pool's gold one of the small ammonites there absolutely golden a beautiful fossil from the Jurassic age. When you find those along the shore, very nice to pick up, put them in fresh water for two or three days, soak the salt out of them and uh, get them uh, nice and dry after a couple of weeks and then a bit of varnish to protect them from the air, that sort of thing. So uh, nice to show you the plastic model of the ammonite. And um, a chap from Wet Pex recently, when he came out on a fossil walk with me, he was saying how he put a small cuttlefish in a really large carp tank and the small cuttlefish had a similar ammonite beak, just like this one. And it used its ammonite beak, the cuttlefish did, to get a carp that was in this tank and shred it in seconds. So you can imagine what a big ammonite would have been like back in the Jurassic Seas, quite a force to be reckoning with, using its tentacles with the grippers, with the suckers, and then grabbing the fish or the ichthyosaur in and then eating it. So uh, that's what the ammonites look like. and. Uh, I'll show you two now on the beach, uh, a little backbone that my wife found, a small ichthyosaur backbone. And um, the ichthyosaur there, I've got a plastic model of the ichthyosaur in this hand. And the ichthyosaur grew up to 60 feet, swam as fast as tuna fish and ate anything that moved back in the Jurassic. So that's the model there of the ichthyosaur and what it looked like swimming around 190 million years ago in fairly deep seas looking for its prey. And some of the ichthyosaurs, especially the large-eyed ichthyosaur, the ophthalmosaur, 
was some um, uh, really adept at hunting its prey down deep in the bottom of the sea. So uh, the ichthyosaurs were an amazing thing to see. And that's quite a top trump, finding those out along the beach, looking for the fossils and uh, trying to make some good finds. And as long as you don't dig in the cliffs in situ, you're allowed to take these fossils that wash out along the shoreline, the sea doing the work for you. It'd be absolute madness to go too near the dangerous cliffs. You see the cliffs falling down all the time and uh, it's best to keep away from the cliffs and uh, you will see people right under the vertical cliffs and vertical cliffs that you can see actually falling. So um, you see bits of the actual paper shells fluttering down and um, the people don't go away from the cliffs and uh, that's when it's really dangerous, life-threatening and people have uh, been dangerously hit in the past. So uh, some of the safe collecting tips for fossil hunting on the Jurassic Coast. So here is one of the ammonites with a bit of the uh, mud on still in the center of the ammonite and I've got a hardened steel pin here and I'll just use the pin to pick out the center of the ammonite just pushing in from the sides here trying to get that mud and sometimes beef rock to flick away to flick out of the center of the fossil and you can see there as I push away around the edges more of it coming off let's get that big chunk off and uh, I'll use a bit of the actual mud itself, the attrition of the mud, a bit like the attrition of the sand and sea wears them down when they're on the beach being worked by the sea's actions. This is what I'm going to show you now, a bit of the sort of scrubbing motion that the sea would do anyway with sand and uh, I'll just wet that uh, specimen here, bring it back across. Look at that, you can start to see the centre really developing there just having done that work with the hardened steel pin look at all the mud on the back there still to get off that one and then uh, you see a whole mixture of the fossils here I've got from the early weeks of January quite good fossil collecting and uh, here with the hardened steel pin let's push into the center again and uh, get that mud off here I'll just go around the whirls pushing with the hardened steel pin. This is something you can do. Put the ammonites in fresh water for two or three days. When you get home, keep changing the water, leach the salt out of these pyrite ammonites. Salt water is not good for pyrite ammonites. And uh, then once you've had a go, um, putting the ammonites in a bucket of water, keep changing that water for those two or three days. Dry them out for two or, four, two or three weeks. Um, you don't have to dry them out on anything other than a shelf, uh, a sunny shelf, and um, they shall uh, then be nice and dry to put a bit of picture varnish on. And uh, once you've put the picture varnish on them, then um, I'll just grind this one down in the water a little bit and then bring it back out. Once you put the uh, picture varnish on them, that highlights them and protects them from the air to some extent, but uh, pyrite and pyrite decay is something you've always got to face with these particular um, fossils and uh, I just process them like that. It's always helped me. I've had some pirate ammonites since I was a boy and they still survived. Uh, a crucilobiceros, a specimen of that nature, has survived all the way through to the present day with me, but uh, you always expect it um, to probably go off. Um, these Promicrocerus, I do do the processing on after coming back from the beach, I get them in a bucket of fresh water straight away to get that salt water out, which does them no good, I don't think. But uh, there's lots of different theories as to how to um, cope with pyrite decay, and you can look those up. Uh, they're all online. Uh, particularly the Charmouth Heritage Centre have put some good ideas and tips on as well. So there's one of the little ammonites I've just prepared with this hardened steel pin. and. Uh, I'll put it with the rest and a lot more to go working on. Another one here, I think I'll have a go at that in a minute. Thanks for watching.